Björn, godmorgen. Det er forbandet redningsbælte. <laughs> Som han er. For the cap, ma'am. He can't leave the bridge. Beautiful soap to match soap med hvide boller. Mrs. Sørensen has no vodka. No life jacket. Did you hear that, Mrs. Pitt? Mrs. Sørensen has no life jacket. Mrs. Sørensen has no life jacket. Who? Mrs. Sørensen. My dear, haven't you forgotten your life jacket? Hardly. Mrs. Sørensen, I think you've forgotten your life jacket. Thank you, Mr. Skull, but I prefer not to wear it. Captain's orders, Mrs. Sørensen. Really? Mr. Hanson. Sir. Put another look out on the starboard bow. Yes, sir. Ahoy there! Put another look out starboard. Jump to it. I have to report, sir, that Mrs. Sarenson refuses to put on her life jacket. Make her put it on. I've tried, sir, but she won't. Mr. Hansen. Sir. Ask Mrs. Sorensen to see me in my cabin. Yes, sir. When I saw her come aboard, I knew we were in for trouble. Did you, sir? Not that I don't like them that way. <clears throat> but in peacetime, sir. And ashore. Come in, Mrs. Sørensen. You wanted to see me, Captain. What is your objection to wearing a life jacket? Apparently the same as yours. Mrs. Sørensen, have you ever been put in irons? No. You would find it much more uncomfortable than wearing a life jacket. You can't put me in irons because I refuse to wear a life jacket. You're mistaken, Mrs. Sørensen. I am the captain of this ship, and you are a passenger. My job is to give orders, and yours is to obey them. I am responsible for the safety of every person in my ship, and I am determined to bring all my passengers safely to the port for which they have bought their tickets, whether you like it or not. Stuart! You're not really going to put me in arms. Sir? That's Mrs. Sorensen's life jacket. Aye, aye, sir. In 48 hours, you will be ashore at Copenhagen. Then you can wear whatever you like. But while you are in my ship, you will obey my orders. Sir! You're wanted on the bridge, sir. <laughs> British patrol boat. Wish, wish to speak with you. you. <laughs> wish to speak with you. As if we weren't late enough already. They want to take us into a control port and hold us there for days, perhaps weeks. Better than meeting a U-boat anyway, sir. Oh, they say U-boat commanders are very polite. Yes. Afterwards. She looks pretty fast, sir. Let them come and get me.
Captain Anderson? Mm-hmm. I've got a telegram for you from your owners. I'm Lieutenant Commander Ellis, and this is Lieutenant Commander Ashton. I can't say I'm glad to see you, gentlemen. We brought you some English newspapers, Captain. Yes. Thank you. My passengers will find them interesting. We shall want to see your ship's papers, Captain. All right. You refuse to heave to, Captain. Any particular reason? For the particular reason that I did not want to lose time with your contraband control. Radio lock, sir. Radio cabin sealed, sir. Thank you. What's your cargo, Captain? Iodine, cast a seat, can show no bar. Crude medical supplies. Yes, crude medical supplies. My country has had no shipments since the war. I can see your point, Captain. I wonder if you can. You see, the unfortunate thing about war is that neutrals sometimes have to suffer. They may be carrying goods for our enemies, and we have to see that they don't. I know it means inconvenience and delay, but we think that our way is a better one than putting a torpedo into you. I appreciate that. Anyway, those are our orders, and we had to stop you. What would you have done in our place, Captain? Orders are orders. What would you have done in my place, Lieutenant Commander? Run away. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Cigar? Do you mind if I stick to my pipe? Not at all. I stick to mine. Thank you. The ship's manifest. I've got a stage there. Yes, here. Mm -hmm. Consigned to the order of the Danish government. Kinshona Bark, 525 tons, packed in bales. Yes. Mm -hmm. Crude iodine, 504 tons. That's a big shipment, Captain. It's the biggest yet. Mm-hmm. And very valuable to my country. Yeah, valuable to any country. Mm. Can't proceed in bags, 1,610 tons. And spoken, 268 tons, 28 tons on deck. Do you know what your cargo's worth, Captain? Certainly, 40 million kroner. Yes, about two million pounds sterling. Yes? Your turn next. It was simply charming. Good. English by birth, Mrs. Sarenson. Yes, my husband is Danish and we live for some time in America. Is your husband still in America? No, he lives in Denmark. I live in America. You cross the Atlantic very frequently. Yes, I do. Perhaps you have some business that... Uh... My husband has the custody of our child, but I'm allowed to visit her at frequent intervals. I see. Thank you, Mrs. Sarenson. Please ask Miss Carolly to come in now, will you? Certainly. You tell us from Bayer Blanco, the 10th. Yes. Pernambuco, the 24th. New York, the 6th. Roundabout route, Captain. Owner's orders. Had to pick up Red Cross supplies in New York. Mm. Well, it's marked on the stage, friend. Independent manifest. 32 tons packed in special cases. Consigned to Germany under the International Red Cross Agreement. Oh, yes, Christ. Engineer's logbook, sir. Lieutenant says, shall he proceed with the search, sir? Yes, please. Tell him general examination, huh? Oh, one moment, Church. Captain, as a mere formality, we shall need one or two of the hatches open. Would you give the necessary orders? Mm-hmm. He's all right. Thank you, Mrs. Arbor. That is all. Oh, thank you. <laughs> How acute. Huh? Mrs. Arbor. How do you suppose she came to marry a professor of the Finnish language? Oh, I can tell you that, sir. <laughs> she was his only pupil. <laughs> There's only one passenger left, sir. Ah, Mr. Pigeon. Surely, surely your name is English, Mr. Pigeon? 
Correct. I was born in the old country. And your business takes you abroad? Mm-hmm. I don't know. You are a talent scout, Mr. Pigeon. When the mood takes me. What kind of talent do you scout, Mr. Pigeon? Acts. Hmm? Variety acts. Oh, then have these Hungarian artists been engaged by you? I'm only interested in the big time. You travel a great deal to the United States. I bring the acts over. Not so easy these days. Oh, but I'll do a lad extra. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Pigeon. Okay. To skill, can you inform your passengers that while they are in English port, they must black out all lights? Yes, sir. Uh, allow me, sir. Uh, Commander, do you think that we should stay here long? Can't, sir. You see, I have a brother in London. Really? And I'm his favourite brother. Oh, in that case, perhaps our search party will be able to find some contraband. Oh, that would be splendid, sir. Skipper. You want to do the saloon, sir? Do sit down, Captain. Thank you. Well, Captain, we've examined the ship's papers, the passengers, and your cargo. The papers are in order, and the examining officers are satisfied with your passengers. But the cargo is contraband. But I have here an admiralty list of ships to be passed through as quickly as possible on arrival. Your ship captain is among them. So it only remains to satisfy us that your cargo is intended for your country and your country alone. How long will that take? Well, the Ministry of Economic Warfare will give that answer tonight. So there'll be nothing to stop you sailing in the morning. That would be splendid. Stuart, my owners asked me to get in touch with our agent here. Can you help me? Can you stretch your legs tonight, Captain? Oh. Go ashore. Yes, it might be managed. How about dinner afterwards? Very good of you. There's no duty boat free. No, I'll arrange for a local man to take it. Right up. Oh, you will need a couple of landing passes. Thank you. Gentlemen. Oh, that's oh, good. good. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Oh. one for me. You understand, Captain Anderson, that until you get your clearance paper in the morning, we shall hold you responsible for the ship and everyone in her. Perfectly. When will the boat be here? About six. Four belts. <laughs> Motorboat here? Sure, it came half an hour ago. Then let's go. Oh, don't forget the landing passes. I thought you had taken them. Me? No. They were lying on the desk. You sure you didn't put them in a drawer? Of course I'm sure. They can't have flown away. Oh, I know they were lying there, but I didn't touch them. If you didn't, somebody else did. Anyway, how could they get a shot? My goodness, I had a boatload to do a paint job. Never mind the ship's boat. Go and see if the motorboat is still there. The mo... My goodness. Take the port cabins, I'll take the starboard. Yes, sir. Hello, Captain. I beg your pardon. Mrs. Sorensen.
pigeon has flown. No way on the ship? No. Sure? Yes. Did you see Mrs. Searnson anywhere? No. Mrs. Searnson and Mr. Pigeon. Does it make sense to you? No, during the whole voyage, they never once spoke to each other. I wonder what she tore out of here. It's the local paper. If we had another copy, we could tell. Just a minute. Again? May I borrow your newspaper? Certainly, Captain. But you can read it here, Captain. Silly. Now we shall see. Page 12. Bam. I got it. If you suffer from indigestion, take Tono's stomach powder. Mrs. J writes, I was worn out. My husband gave me up my doctor. What have you got there? Tono. What is it, sir? Revised timetable of trains to London. London. Mm -hmm. Eastgate on sea, departure 7.15. Arrives London, Victoria, 9.15. 7.15. I'll stop them catching the train, and if I have to swim ashore. What will happen when we don't turn up to dinner? You will turn up. I'm going to the railway station. But what shall I tell our agent or the commander? Tell them whatever you like. Mrs. Sales. And Mr. Pigeon. Hello. Hello. Come on, Martha Harley. We've got exactly a minute and a half to catch that train. I know, but... Hello? Hello? Can I speak to Mrs. Clayton, please? Well, this is the secretary speaking. No, Mrs. Clayton is not at home at the moment. Yes, yeah, she is in town, but is out giving a first aid lecture. Who is that, please? Oh, this is her niece, Miss Clayton. When will Mrs. Clayton be back? I think about half past ten, Miss Clayton. Well, will you tell her I shall be in London about that time? I shall have a friend with me. Very good. I don't know you, do I? No, I've only been with Mrs. Clayton for a month. My name is Lang. Come on, come on. Yep, 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 yep. Goodbye. No, stay there. Mind shutting that door, sir. There's a draft. What's the next stop? London, sir.
Hello, Rickman. Back? No, I'm paddling a canoe up Niagara Falls. Funny, aren't you? How many ships in the anchorage? None. All boarded. Is it the ocean breeze or the silver foam for the modern morning, sir? What, those old tubs? No, I want saucy Sally, 630 sharp. Broken crankshaft. Tell us a third time. Now, please, I can do my guards at the 630. You have got a bunch of old crocks, haven't you? Any more letters or telegrams? Yes, but wait till I finish. Oh, it's 7 o'clock now. Why did Horace ever sell his farm and go to sea? Never mind, you be home by 9, little man. Finish the board and report to the sound down. Two minutes. Here's mine. Harry sit and read this. I'd expect me to do copper plate with build lines. What can I do for you, sir? Straight along the passage through the swing doors, he's in the hotel. He's off. Well, find anything? Yes, sir. A lot of stuff that wasn't manifested. Cases of machinery? Yes, sir. Look like parts of an aeroplane. I thought so. Get me an EW on the direct line. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Ellis. <laughs> Oh, may I present our agent? Oh, we sir. know, Bartley. Oh, yes, honey boy. Where's the skipper? Uh, well, he's staying on board, sir. He's not feeling very well. Why, what's wrong with him? He was all right? Oh, he's awfully ill now. Keeps on having attacks. It's a uh, stomachache. And when he gets a stomachache, he's no good for it. He should drink gin. Uh, wait up. Four pink gins. Can we send out a doctor? Uh, no, he hates doctors. So do I. Only two things worth a tuppenny dam. Gin and a good circulation. How dare you steal the two landing passes? How dare you go ashore without landing passes? You know what I could do? I Look could... at my arms off. Or what? You don't want to be mixed up with the police, do you? No, do you? No, I don't. Where's Mr. Pitcher? Mr. Pitcher? Yes, Mr. Pitcher. I don't know anything about Mr. Pitcher. I suppose he came to London to engage variety acts, huh? That's his business. What a coincidence that you two hit on the same idea, to steal the two landing passes at the same time, to use the same motorboat, to travel on the same train. You don't have to believe it. I believe that if I stick to you, we shall meet Mr. Pitcher again. Do you? Yes, I do. Look. I promise I'll be back in the ship before morning. My word of honor. In the blackout? <laughs> East Kid on sea, 10, 10, 12, 5, 3, 30. So we leave at 10 past 10. Oh, 5 past 12. And if we don't find Mr. Pitchin by 3.30, we all go to jail. And no doubt we shall find him there. Meanwhile, where you go, I go. Gas mask cases. Don't forget the torches. Don't forget the torches. Don't forget the gas mask cases. Torches. Gas mask cases. Here, I've done it. Five quarters of the blackout. Everlasting battering. The beam as strong as a search light. Absolutely legal. You probably one of these and never lose your way, sir. I don't want to talk. But right your way home, sir. Like the young lady's way home as well, sir. Only half a dollar. Thank you, lady. See you, lady. Thank you. Thank you, lady. What about a nice gas mask case, miss? Andy, for putting sand in. I've got another torch. For the gentleman. I don't need a torch. Everybody needs a torch in the blackout. Thank you. Thank you, lady. Shine your torch. Have you any idea how many times I've stood on my bridge in the middle of the Atlantic on a night just like this? Oh, I thank you. I thought it was you, sir. I said, look where I was going. Sorry. Obviously, you're better in the middle of the Atlantic. Now, will you shine your torch? This is Buckingham Palace Road. You really know where we are? Of course. Amazing. But I wouldn't be much use in the middle of the Atlantic. 
That gentleman shine his torch down, please. Please, God. Oh. get about London and black out without the money. I can get all the money I need. And I'll buy you such a dinner as you have never had in your life. Big words. Big dinner. Are you hungry? As a matter of fact, I'm starving. Then let's take a taxi. All right. But I'm not paying for it. I park for up. Taxi! Here's one. See? Can we give you a lift or something? No. Oh. You better take a taxi. Taxi! Cab! Cab! It's a hansom. Cabby! Three Vikings. Three what? Vikings. The three Vikings. Now oh, the Danish place, Dolby Street. Okay, who am I for? Vikings. We have no gas mask. Two, sir? Uh, two. Haven't you got a table by the wall? I'm so sorry, sir. They're all take. Hmm. Uh, I should like to talk to the proprietor. Yes, sir. He's bound to know what's good in his own restaurant, isn't he? to speak to you, Mr. Skill. Oh, what is wrong again? What is wrong again? Don't you know by now that I hate to be disturbed? Tell him to go to her. But be polite. Very polite. Mm, stir for two minutes. Add cream. Don't stir. Sir. Uncle Eric, you want it on the telephone. It's urgent. Oh, are you also an idiot? I thought at least my kitchen was clear of idiots. Don't you see I have no time? I must not be disturbed in my kitchen. And now I am disturbed. Once is enough. Tell the silly fool to ring tonight after midnight at 12. But uh, be polite. Very polite. Oh, but it is urgent, Uncle Eric. Good 
evening. Good evening, Mr. Skull. This is Mr. Skull, proprietor of the Three Vikings. I'm Captain Anderson of the Helvig, and this is Mrs. Sorensen. Mrs. Sorensen is a passenger on my ship. Good evening. Good evening. What a surprise, Captain. And what a pleasure, a very great pleasure. I hope nothing has happened to the Helvig. Oh, no, 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 no. And your brother sends you his love. My brother. Now, you must tell me everything. Hmm. What is it? What is it? Why don't you serve? Why don't you take the order? You must have a drink with me. You must have something to eat. Uh, would you like to come and see my cold table? Certainly. Come. Now, you must have some of this. And some of that. And some of that. That is wonderful. Arik? By the way, Mr. Skull, I came ashore in such a hurry, I have no money. <laughs> no money? <clears throat> so, you are Captain Anderson in the ship where my brother is a uh, cook? Cook? Or is he something else? Of course he's something else. Ah, but what? My first officer. Ah, please, excused. But the Helvig must be since eight days in Copenhagen. But she's not. Where is she if she's not? That's a secret. And it's also a secret that I am here in London. Oh, so? It is a secret. Of course, I don't mention it. But is it also a secret why my brother did not come to see me? My favorite brother? Is it also a secret why he did not wire, why he did not write? How could he write if he only arrived this afternoon? No, please. No trouble. Uncle Eddie. Go away. What are you doing in the restaurant? So, he could not wire, he could not write, and he could not come. Why could he not come when a passenger could come? Because I am the captain, and I have forbidden him to come. And you expect favors of me when you forbid my favorite brother to come and see me? Excuse me, Mr. Scold, I couldn't help hearing. I paid the gents cab fare, three bob and a tanner. Damn your bobs and your tanners. There is more important business here to be discussed. Well, I couldn't help hearing. Please, Uncle Let Eddie. Be quiet. Now, look here, Mr. Scold. You seem to doubt my word. I do not seem, and I do doubt, and why should I believe you? Mr. Skiol, the gentleman on the telephone is a tall call. If he speaks from America, let him, I should care. But it is your brother, Mr. Skiol. What brother? Your brother Axel, Mr. Skiol. Axel? Why? I the... told you it was urgent, Mr. Skiol. Where's the phone? Hello. Hello. Hello, Skiol. It's me, Anderson. Here in London. Yes, he's here. Oh, yes, I like it very much. Uh, listen, Skull, did you leave the boat tied up? Good. Yes, I had to follow them. No, Pigeon is missing, but I've got her all right. She's sitting in the restaurant. She... Speak to your brother. Hello, Eric. Eric? Eric? Oh, oh Axel, I am Eric? so glad to hear your voice, my boy. You jolly Chinaman. Your captain? Oh, yes, he is a beautiful man. From the first moment I liked him. The lady asks if the gentleman is going. What lady? Thank you. All right. Now, uh, what would you have to follow? We haven't ordered yet. Not ordered. Not ordered. Ake buf meloi. Fiske bolle uit tomat sauce. Dansk buf meloi special tater skiol. What do you suggest? No, well, this and uh, this and that. Uh, Already, but uh, that, that is wonderful. But then I usually prepare that myself, and I would have to leave you. Oh, pity. We should love to taste it. Well, don't worry, don't worry. You shall see. Fifteen minutes. Danske Buff Malloy, special at Berskjold. Follow me. How is Skjold the maid? He seemed to have dined well. Not so well as us. No. But he has a clear conscience. No, he hasn't. Why? He has to cover my absence. I'll put you both on the spot. I like being on the spot. Skull. Skull. What else do you like? Small ship. I suppose you never tried a big ship. The bigger the ship, the smaller the adventure. The smaller the ship, the bigger the adventure. But you wouldn't understand that. Because you have childish ideas about life. Because like so many women, you live only for little excitements like... Uh, like what? Uh, like going out every night. Someone new, somebody new, right? But you didn't answer my question. Did you ever try a big ship? Of course I did. And did you ever try being married? That can be quite a big adventure. <sighs> Why do women always say that? Marriage ends adventure. Why do men always say that? <laughs> Skull. Skull. Well, in five minutes, our first train is leaving. Show me. 
Commandant Anderson? Yes. In the Danish Navy? Mm-hmm, in the Danish Navy. And you left it. Why? The Danish Navy sails around the coast of Denmark and then back again. I wanted to sail everywhere a ship can sail. But you wouldn't understand that. The Bornholm was a big ship? Hmm. Six times as big as a Helvet. Press the wind, huh? Press it again. It's fascinating. Hmm. That's a song the officers used to sing when we went ashore. The last bar special. Twice? Twice. Therefore, in your slaws, some tap balance all down. Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. Let me try. Now I've got it. Therefore, Bill, you snuff some tap on Lancelot. Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. Skull. Skull. Close your eyes when you get outside and count ten. Then you will be able to see better in the blackout. Thank you, Mr. Skull. You think of everything. Oh, it is nothing, nothing at all. And whenever you come, the thief the kings are all yours. Goodbye. 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 Eight, nine, ten. Can you see any better? Just as black as it was. Blacker? What are we going to do until five past twelve? I've got a lot to do. We have a lot to do. We have a lot to do. What do we do first? Have a drink? Good. And the drinks are on me. Good. Here's your taxi, sir. And I'll pay for the taxi. Where are we now? Just a square. Is it? Look up. I've never seen the stars so clear in a big city. And look so high. See that window? I spent eight years of my life there. Is anyone at home? Aunt Kate? This is my aunt's house. I think you'll like her. Aunt Kate? <coughs> it's the boys. They must be in the kitchen. Home. She must be upstairs. Mm -hmm. Aunt Kate? Aunt Kate? Well, at least the secretary ought to be here. Aunt Kate? Aunt Kate? Aunt Kate? Sure, you have an aunt and not an uncle. Good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Sorensen. I'm Miss Clayton. You've never heard the name Sorensen? Never in my life. This is my aunt's house. Who are you? My name is Lang. Oh, the secretary. Where is Mrs. Clayton? Sergeant Clayton. Somewhere in England, I believe. Don't let's waste time, Mrs. Sorensen. I tell you why I'm not Mrs. Sorensen. And you, I suppose, are not Mr. Pigeon. No, I'm not Mr. Pigeon. Sloan 2741. What name, please? Tell her it's Mr. Pigeon. It's urgent. She's in the bathroom, sir. Can't you ring you back? Ring me back on the devil fall. Does she know what time it is? She's supposed to be here long ago. Tell her to hurry. Where should she ring you, sir, in case she asks? She knows. Where is she to meet you, sir? She knows. Hello. Hello.
Hello, hello. Have you finished? Who is that? This is the Army and Navy Club, madam. So Mr. Pigeon is at the Army and Navy Club? The Army and Navy Club. Then who are you? My name is Anderson. Hans Anderson. And we are the Brothers Grin. They were. They're mm -hmm. talking. What are you looking at? Stars. Out. Suppose we don't get out. Yes, as a matter of fact, we feel quite comfortable where we are. Yes, we are just beginning to like it very much. Get out and stop talking. Who is going to stop me talking? We are in a free country where you can say what you like and do what you like. We choose to sit here and talk as loud as we like, and if we want to, we shall sing. As a matter of fact, we do want to sing, don't we? Yes, we do. Hurrah, 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 oh, there for me, yes, us, some tap and soldat. Hurrah, hurrah. Oh. Not Mr. Pigeon. Not Mr. Pigeon. Not Mr. Pigeon. Not Mr. Pigeon. <laughs> Not Mr. Pigeon. Not Mr. Pigeon. Not Mr. Pigeon. Not Mr. Pigeon. Not Mr. No, he's certainly not Mr. Pigeon. Commandant Anderson, for hands of Fitzier, for hands may have skip on home. Looks genuine, eh, Yes, Herr Van Dyn. That's more than can be said for you, isn't it, Mrs. Sorensen? Oh, I was forgetting. Your name is not Sorensen. And yours is not Van Dyn. You are not Danish. And you are not English. We met once before, do you remember? Who could forget those hands, that face, that voice? That whole striking appearance. And my powers of imagination. Don't forget them. I don't. No one knew better how to make prisoners talk. And I don't have to warn you. But I do have to warn you. No, no, no. It's no good trying to bluff me, Miss Clayton. You said that once before in Dusseldorf. The next day I crossed the Dutch frontier. Ah, yes. But this time you haven't got Mr. Pigeon to help you. You said that before, too. Well, we shall see when we bring him here. From the Army and Navy Club. Oh, I remember. You said you wanted to know how I should look, tied hand and foot, knowing that next day I was to face a firing squad. I should still be interested to know. Oh, you think I'm a coward. Well, would a coward take a dangerous post right here in the midst of the enemy? Anyway, I'm not a fool. That's why you're here. While you and Mr. Pigeon were at liberty, I was in constant danger. I waited a long time, too. Five weeks, wasn't it, Miss Lung? Yes, Herr Fontaine. The patience is its own reward. There's no doubt you know from your own job. But by the way, what is your job now? Oh, well, you'll talk later. I'm quite prepared to believe that this fellow really is the captain of a Danish ship. We know all about the Helvig, don't we, Lehmann? The Helvig, yes, Herr von Rijn. You are traveling on a neutral ship to a neutral port, but you were brought in this morning by contraband control. We know about it, don't we, Lehmann? Yes, Herr von Rijn, this morning. You and Mr. Pigeon have been traveling in neutral ships for the past six months. This time, you would have sent your information to the usual channels, but you saw how you could save the Admiralty five days. 
Just what is that information, Mrs. Sorensen? It doesn't occur to you that I've merely come home. I know you, Mrs. Sorensen. I know people of your kind. You're not the secret agent that works for money. You like to do it. It's in your nature to ask for trouble. Adventures in your blood. Now, you have important information for the Admiralty. I know that agents never communicate with their departments personally. They do it by code. Therefore, such a coded message must be in your possession. Well, where is it? Nothing is in your notebook. Your lipstick contains nothing but lipstick. Your cigarette case, nothing but cigarette papers and a made cigarette. Curious to find a woman who makes her own cigarettes. I once met a woman who smoked a clay pipe. Really? How oh, interesting. May I ask you to take off your clothes? Miss Lang will help you, won't you, Miss Lang? Yes, Sir Von Dine. Well, Mrs. Sorensen? Can I have a cigarette? Certainly. I remember at our last meeting, it was a sign of surrender when you asked for a cigarette. May I have one of my own? Of course. You always did prefer your own cigarettes, didn't you? I remember at our last meeting... Of course. That's why I couldn't find anything on you. I should still like a cigarette. So that's your job, M47, to find out under what neutral names German vessels sail across the Atlantic. Well, we know all about that, don't we, Niemann? Yes, Herr Van Dijk. All marked with the same special watermark. Well, if the Admiralty wants a message, why shouldn't they have one? Niemann, can you find a neutral ship, preferably American, bound for Europe? Yes, Herr Van Dijk. I have an excellent one here. American freight MS Mirabel, 7,000 tons, oil burning cargo machinery consigned to Lisbon. I think I have to go now, Herr Von Dine. The cinema will be nearly over. Go away. Good night, Herr Frank. Good night. Well, we can leave the Esslingen, but we'll make the Admiralty believe she sails under the name of the Mirabel. What's the point? Don't you understand? I'm quite sure Miss Lang understands. Explain to her, Miss Lang. I think there will be trouble if an English warship has orders to arrest this American freighter. But we are not Germans who shoot first and ask questions afterwards. You will see, Miss Clayton, the skipper of the Mirabelle will get tough. And as the Admiralty have definite information that the Mirabelle is really a German ship, the English commander will get tough, too. As the Americans can't bear anybody to be tougher than themselves, well, that's how wars start. Your national anthem, Mrs. Sorensen. Why don't you stand up? I see the captain is already on his feet. I seem to have missed a good deal. I have no quarrel with any neutral, Captain, so long as he remains neutral. Since you got yourself mixed up in this affair, I must treat you as an enemy. I realize, of course, that until now I have been treated as a neutral. But with your permission or without, I intend to rejoin my ship before sunrise. You're an optimist, Captain. And this lady is going with me. We sail at dawn. Tomorrow? No, today.
I'm sorry I dragged you into all this. <laughs> you did your best to keep me out of it. Well, I hope Mr. Pigeon's clever, otherwise we're sunk. He doesn't look very clever. Still, perhaps he is. Well, after all, you don't look very clever either. Yet you are. How do you mean? You both escaped from him before, didn't you? Oh, you heard that. Most of it. And what do you think? <laughs> Skull. Skull. I'm sorry I can't do anything about it. But I can. Yes, I know. No, what? You stiffened your muscles before you were tied up. Good. And what happens now if I relax? You get a little play in the rope. And if somebody gives a good hard pull on the rope? Who? You. How? Haven't you got high heels and long legs? All right, I'm doing it. What are you waiting for? Father Grimm, we must give him another chance to look at us. You needn't worry about him. He won't come down again. He can see us from where he is. How? Can you see the lift door? No. Well, by it, there's a mirror which connects with another one upstairs. The Gestapo had the same thing in the prison where I met Van Dern. It's the first thing I look for. You are clever. Do you think he's looking at us now? No, you can always see a flash of light if anyone's looking at us. I think I can bring him down. What for? Never mind. First, we move the chairs a little bit. Which way? You want to be just opposite the door and the mirror. Then a little bit to the right. All right. Stop. He's looking. Now he'll come down. What did I tell you? Hello, Mr. Grimm. Don't call me Grimm. You were introduced to us as Grimm, Mr. Grimm. Is that all you came down for, Mr. Grimm? Do you know why he came down? You want me to say it? Why? Because after we moved the chairs, he could only see you. I get you. Before we start, we let him have one more look through his periscope. How did we get into this place? Through a door. Iron, I think, it was locked. Along a passage, half bare boards, the other half thick carpet. Then into the lift and down here. More detail? Can't. Why not? It was pitch dark. I had to go where I was pushed. Smell anything? Cooking. Hear anything? Only the cinema. Close at hand? No, rather muffled. And the plate got saved. The king? It came from over there. Then what about that? It's not the cinema. They're shut. That banjo player's good. And the singer. It must be a nightclub. So Van Dyne has his office and a cinema at the nightclub. He's having his look. Two minutes we shall be looking back at him. All right, he's gone. And I relax. And I use my legs. Go on. It's not so easy. Son of Father Grimm. Put your hands up, like they were. Trust me? Yes. We shall catch that last train. And warn Mr. Pigeon. Yes. And don't forget to talk if Grimm is looking. Look out. He's 
there again. Talk. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is noble, he's gone. If he suspects anything, he shall hear the lift coming down. What are you going to do? Start at the bottom and work up? No, get to the top and work down. I've got my fingers crossed. What do you think you're lighting? A bonfire? Why can't you ruddy wardens mind your own business? What do you expect me to light my pipe with? An electric battery? Why don't you do something to earn your three quid a week and leave taxpayers alone poking your long noses into other people's pipes? That's all the thanks you'll get. Hey! Good Lord. Put out those, those lights. lights! They must be mad. You're seeking get yeah. in that door. Yeah, What's all this? Anderson. That'll catch him all right. Taxi! 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 
Nancy. Who's Nancy? Oh, me, I just got Daddy's name. Just yes, got the dinner. I'll keep it up for you. What's the name of this street? And over square, Governor. Where to? The Vikings, Danish right. restaurant. Cup of cinnabon, Bill. Foreigner, ain't he? Lovely, isn't the state? What's yours, Sir John? Where's Walter? Gone home. You better see who the city fool is. But be polite, very polite. Captain Anderson! There's Mr. Skirt. Mr. Skirt, get a map of London. Get the what? Get a map of London. Uh, well, what are you waiting for? Get the captain a map of London. Listen, Mr. Skirt, I need your help. I need all your help. Do you remember the lady who was dining with me? She's in great danger. Now listen, there's going to be a fight. A big fight. If you're all Danes, you don't want a reason for fighting. Oh. <laughs> what are we waiting for? Who do we fight? Come on, here's the map. Now, now where do we go? That's what we have to find out. Hmm? I've never seen the place from outside. Now, you all know London. Yes. Where's the cinema and the nightclub in the same building? Oh, oh what are you? The Garden of Eden. The White Needle. There's a cinema next door. There's a new stand of White Needle. There are many, at least half a dozen of White Needle. Quiet, please, quiet, quiet. Where's Chester Square? Here. Here. Shh. Chester Square. Now, steering by the stars, we navigated nor nor east at an approximate speed of eight knots. We held that course for two and a half minutes. That would bring us about here. Buckingham Palace. Well, we all know it isn't that. At the same speed, we proceeded due east for another two minutes. We passed under a big arch. Admiralty Arch. arch. Immediately afterwards, we altered course nor nor west for four minutes at a reduced speed. That would bring us here. So. so. Oh, right, right, right. So, now to check it, we take a cross bearing. Give me a pencil. Where's Hanover Square? Shh. Hanover Square. Huh? Somewhere where these two lines cross. I said the garden oh, was in the mouth. The white negro. But how would you know the right one? Because I know the band. There's a banjo player and the man who sings. We have to search until we find it. Do we all go? No, no, not all of you. Uh, the five biggest will go. Well, line up, line up. But you can't go to a nightclub looking like you do? Uh, yes, uh, somebody has to give me a decent suit. Somebody about my size. Now then. You, 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 and you. Your suit will do for me. Don't forget, white ties. And get me the Army Navy Club. Army Navy Club. <laughs> Mr. Pigeon? Who wants him? The ladies in the cab won't come in. Call Mr. Pigeon. It's about time she turned up. He's been like a cat on hot bricks. What it is to be young. Where is the lady? In the cab, sir. All right. Good night, Hobbs. Good night, sir. Army Navy Club. He's just this minute left, sir. Where to, sir? Regency Hotel, Little Room. What the devil happened to you? I thought we were raised a week up. You heard the address. Mr. Pigeon!
me. You have no banjo player? Uh, no, sir. Are you sure of that? Uh, yes, sir. You've never had a banjo player, did you? No banjo player. No banjo player. Perhaps we can send out one for you, sir. No, no, no. Tell me, haven't you men singing here? No, sir. No men singing here. Wait, sir. Haven't you a banjo player here? No, sir, I don't think so. No banjo player. interested in your cellar. Oh, but of course. <laughs> Everything in our cellar contains will be brought onto your table. It can't be a very big cellar. Champagne. At once, sir. Thank you. What do you think? <laughs> Haven't you a man singing here? No, sir. Only a girl. Are you sure of that? Very sure, sir. We have never had a man singer. No man singing here. No man singing. You are going, sir? Yes. You have ordered. We are no longer interested in your cellar. The man. In a crowd, it is the only face I ever see to see. Of course, it could have been a girl. Everywhere, always there, always you. Your face in a crowd, although I know that you and I. Well, why don't you bring the champagne? At once, sir. Where's your champagne? This is our place, all right. She said she smelled cooking. From the courtyard into the kitchen, from the kitchen into here. And then where? Into the cloakroom? Yes, of course, coats. I think we should get our coats. Are we going? No, no. This is one of the men behind us. Is he looking? No. Watch those two. Don't let them follow me. Tasha, who pays? My coat. Let you down again. That isn't my coat. 57, sir. That was your number. I can't have that. It's not my coat. It's the coat you gave me, sir. Are you calling me a liar? Let me see for myself. I can't do that, sir. What on earth do you mean? Of course I can look for my own coat. Of course he can. What the devil do you think you're doing, you silly little whippersnapper? Let the gentleman go and look for it. Thank I you, I shall tell the manager. Call him anything you like. Get out of here. One moment. No, please. Oh, I must come. Oh, oh, gentlemen, please. 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 Oh,
How does the lift work? Find out. What can I do but press every single button once? Except you press every single button twice, of course, that's it. You remember my watch skill? Mm -hmm. Now, which button would you be sure not to press twice? I don't know. The stop button, of course. Lang. You always wanted to see me with my back against the wall. Drop that gun. I'm not an amateur, Captain Anderson. My gun points at Mrs. Sorensen. One single movement. One single movement. Can we bargain? What do you offer? Freedom. In return? Freedom. What guarantee? My word. Insufficient. I am not like you, Van Dyne. I use my own name. I don't kill people for the crime of recognizing me. What I do is done by every secret agent. You have spies in your own country, Captain. These two, do they use their own names? Can be bargain. I'll put away my gun if you'll do the same. Mrs. Sills, and would you bring me my coat and hat, please? The police are here. I've got your coat. Well, what are you waiting for? Go on. I give you my word that as soon as we step out of the lift, you are free to go where you like. I hope we shall never meet again. I hope so, for your sake, Captain. I have no intention of visiting Germany. Well, you timed that very nicely, Captain. The police are here. Meet me at Victoria, 3.30. Uh, yes, Captain. I'll lock them in. Are you all right? You haven't got much time. Well, I've got to the I know. We'll meet you at Victoria. The window over there. Careful, one step at a time. Aren't you coming with us? No, I'll show you the way first. Key? You Anderson. Well, your police didn't get me anyway. No wonder you hoped we'd never meet again.
Good day. They always said he was tough. Thank you for everything, Eric. And goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Knut. Knut. Henrik. No. Oswald. Oswald. I knew. Thank you, Arnold. And goodbye. 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 Now she's missed the train. Pigeon. You don't know that girl at all. Papers, Captain, and here's your clearance paper. You can heave up anchor whenever you like. Jerry, heave up! You should hoist this code signal to avoid being stopped again. Well, Captain, next time I hope you'll make up for the dinner you missed. Thank you, Lieutenant Commander Ashton, and goodbye. Oh, and uh, here's a little something for your stomach ache. Mrs. Sørensen, the captain wants to see you in his cabin. Thank you. That girl certainly likes trouble. Come in, Mrs. Sørensen. You wanted to see me, Captain. Sit down, Mrs. Sernsen. Mrs. Sernsen, because of you, the whole control port thinks I'm an old woman suffering from indigestion. It's lucky nobody knew what nonsense I was up to. You think our police and intelligence departments are pretty dumb, don't you? Open your stomach, powder. Nobody knew. I have had enough trouble because of you, and I feel I shall have more. Drop that life jacket. Yeah! 